Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. And when you see Donald Trump consistently attacking women, you see him, whether it's Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Rashida Tla Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, or Ilhan, uh, Congresswoman Omar. Ilhan Omar, I mean, you're seeing that. In fact, today, uh, on the steps of the Capitol, uh, black women, uh, were, they were participating in the march, or rally organized by the Women's March uh, to support Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota. There were a number of speakers who were there. We live streamed that event. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can actually see it. And later tonight, we'll actually live stream the whole rally again. See, that's the other thing. When you own your shit, <laughs> you can do that. So we didn't have to ask somebody to do it. That's what happens. Uh, and so, and my point is, see, see Malik, you can be a man and still cover a women's rally. Uh, that's my point. All right, so folks, our cameras were there. And he, if you missed it, here's some of what took place. I am changing the things I can no longer accept. And from R. Kelly to Donald Trump, what we can no longer accept is the silencing of black women. This is the reckoning. This is us assuming our rightful place as the table shakers, as the truth tellers, as the justice seekers, as the preservers of democracy. We are demanding that you trust black women, that you see black women, that you believe black women and all of us for the world that we have played as healers and preservers of this democracy and this nation. We defend Ilhan because we, we contest the conflation of legitimate, impassioned critique of Israel with anti-Semitism and the fabrication of a notion that when the left calls for justice in Palestine, when the left supports BDS, then it has become the anti-Semitic left. This indicates a failure to take anti-Semitism seriously. If you want to effectively challenge anti-Semitism, then you must recognize the intersections and interrelations of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. And of course, the recent attacks on synagogues and mosques are evidence of this convergence. Yes. I'd like to thank Jewish Voice for Peace, yes. and if not now, for continually reminding us of this connection. And finally, as black women in defense of Ilhan Omar, we invite all who believe in freedom and justice and peace to join us. So a sister of mine on TV said, the thing that upsets, the thing that upsets the occupant of the White House, his schools in the Republican Party, many of our colleagues in the Democratic Party, is that, is that they can't stand they cannot stand that a refugee, a black woman, an immigrant, a Muslim shows up in Congress thinking she's equal to them. of the White House chooses to attack me, we know, we know that that attack isn't for Ilhan. That attack is the continuation of the attacks that he's leveled against women, yes. against people of color, yes. against immigrants, yes. against refugees, yes. and certainly against Muslims. Yes. And at this moment, the occupant of the White House, as my sister Ayanna likes to call him, and his allies are doing everything that they can to distance themselves and misinform the public 
from the monsters that they created that is terrorizing the Jewish community and the Muslim community. Because when we are talking about anti-Semitism, we must also talk about Islamophobia. Yes. It's two sides of the same coin of bigotry. Yes. When they shove that to us and say we're the party of hate, they forget that we're the party of love. We're the party of compassion. We're the party of inclusiveness. What we are fighting for is not for the few, but for the many. Yeah. So I can't ever speak of Islamophobia and fight for Muslims if I am not willing to fight against anti-Semitism. We collectively must make sure that we are dismantling all systems of oppression. Yeah. So this isn't a pity party for Ilhan. This is about a show of strength. Right? This is a show of strength. This is for us to say, this is for us to say, that you, when you come after one of us, you come after all of us. And when one of us speaks, all of us are speaking. Alicia Garza, I want to go to you first. Uh, black women standing up for Representative Ilhan Omar, but the reality is uh, you had two men who are Muslims, uh, of course, Keith Ellison and Andre Carson. Carson was still there. Ellison now the Attorney General in Minnesota. Right. Now you have two women, and the reality is uh, you take those two women, you take the sister from Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. who's actually there today as well, she spoke. Uh, you have, let's just cut to the chase, white folks in this country mm -hmm. who do not want to see Muslims in political office. That's right. Uh, you had Ben Carson, when he ran in 2016, said Muslims should never be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, her audacity to actually challenge American foreign policy when it comes to Israel is what is angering so many different people. Mm -hmm. So your thoughts about uh, the importance of folks standing with her? Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is a superhero. And here's why I say that. Not only was she brave enough to speak on an issue that I think a lot of people won't touch, which is the United States relationship with Israel mm -hmm and as well as Israel's um, uh, human rights abuses. <laughs> and I, I want people to be able to be clear that I, I don't want her to seem like she's speaking about fringe issues. These issues matter to the American people. The reason that they matter is because, one, um, we are uh, giving millions and millions of dollars, billions of dollars in aid, um, to a project that um, has a severe human rights crisis. So that's a threat to American democracy, and it's a threat to the morality of America. That's one. Uh, but Ilhan Omar is also uh, charged as a congresswoman uh, with not just speaking about foreign policy issues. Those are important. She also spoke out very uh, forcefully on Venezuela, and we know that right now, as we speak, there is a coup that has been attempted and uh, maybe attempted again. Mm -hmm. uh, Ilhan Omar has a responsibility to her constituents, and she said this today at the rally that I was really grateful to be able to be at for a little while. She said that she has a responsibility to speak for the people who elected her, which, by the way, she was elected by a landslide. She mm -hmm. had the largest margin of victory, I believe, ever for a sitting congressperson. So uh, I call her a superhero because she is uh, unbossed and unafraid. And as I said at the rally today, I think that Congresswoman Ilhan Omar has her own back. She knows how to de de defend and support uh, and protect herself. And I think our responsibility in this moment is to stand up, not just for Ilhan Omar, but it's to stand up for the women that we put into those seats right. to do exactly what she's doing. Mustafa, she really does scare Republicans for some reason. She just won, <laughs> she's just one out of 435. Well, anytime you're a strong black woman, you're always going to scare a whole lot of people on Capitol Hill. When you speak 
um, and the voice of Sojourner Truth comes through, you're gonna scare folks. When you're willing, like Rosa Parks, to stand against injustice, you're gonna scare some folks. So I have nothing but the utmost respect um, for Congresswoman Omar and how she presents herself and how she is willing to, to really be anchored in her truth um, and helping others to understand that she's trying to pull people together and she has done that throughout her career, but she's also gonna stand for what's right. She's gonna stand against injustice and she's gonna call it out when she sees it. Malik, um, what's up with Republicans in, uh, in, 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 in Omar? Yeah, I, I don't think that Republicans are afraid of Congresswoman Omar at all. I don't think we have anything to be afraid of. But I do know that there's, a, you know, I'm willing to acknowledge that part of this conversation that we're having about her comments um, really deal with the nuances of our foreign policy, support for Israel. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to concede that, that there are definitely nuances. But unfortunately, we live in a country where we really don't talk a lot of nuance, whether we're talking about race. Well, or we do. Well, on the show, the show. But go ahead. Yeah, but, but the law. I, I just community. want to separate us from the rest of the other yeah, people. Yeah, no, and you're, you're go right absolutely ahead. right. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so whether we're talking <laughs> about race, whether we're talking about, home, you know, sexuality, homophobia, anti-Semitism, you know, there aren't a lot of nuances. It's either black or why? Mm -hmm. And so I think mm -hmm. part of the resistance or the response to the congresswoman, if you will, is an extension of that. So there, so we say, okay, you know what? No nuances around, you know, our, our relationship with Israel. None, zero, because we live in a society yep. where that has become the norm. And I just, like I said, I think it's an extension of the other conversations that we're having. Kelly, I don't disagree with you per se, but another angle that I've been looking at for quite some time, especially when it comes to Omar, is the blatant hypocrisy of these people who call themselves Christian, because it has nothing to do with you know, I don't think it has, it's not that it has nothing to do with her being a woman, but the predominant factor is the fact that she is a representative in um, the United States House at wearing a hijab. You know, because like you said, we've had. Oh, two... you saw what happened in Pennsylvania. Yeah. The day the sister got sworn in, she basically, there was a, a, a white woman who gave a prayer. There was an essentially an assault mm -hmm. on that woman being sworn in. And she basically was saying that woman has no place in this state house. Which is the most unchristian like thing right. that I have ever seen come out of a politician um, in my era. I'm sure there has been plenty of it. Oh, yeah, there have been. There's there plenty been. of it. There have been. But the fact of the matter is she is representing yep. her district well. She is one of the most American representatives we have in the House because she's doing her job so well. So the fact that we have, frankly, a bunch of, you know, older white men who are set in their ways and some other, you know, white women as well and maybe some people of color yep. who don't like her either because of just her being a Muslim, you know, and it, it's it's hip, it's hypocritical. Yep. It's hypocritical and it's unchristian like. And for you to represent or say that you represent Jesus or say that you represent God and you're aligning yourself with Israel because you worship the same God. Keep in mind that Allah is technically that God, too. So you are forsaking your brothers and sisters for what? Well, but again, that's called nuance, and so they don't like that. Alicia, final comment, go. Well, let's just add this nuance, and I agree with that 100%. But I think we also have to centralize this conversation in a conversation about power. Mm -hmm. And really what the response and the reaction is to is that the United States is no longer a white, male, Christian, heterosexual country. The country is changing. Demographically, we are changing. Uh, uh, economically, we are changing. There's a lot of change that's happening. Yep. And there's a power struggle that's happening right now between uh, who will keep dominance or yep. who will take dominance. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think what Ilhan Omar represents, as well as Ayanna Presley and Rashida Tlaib, uh, is the change that America is becoming. And that is frightening to those who are in power, who want to keep their power. And so I want to make sure that we centralize this conversation in power because I, I think it is both about being afraid of change, but it's also very much about wanting to still control where resources go. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's about wanting to still be able to control the story of who America is and isn't. Mm -hmm. It's about wanting to be able to control um, whether or not people get to make decisions over their own lives or who makes yep. those decisions. Come on, unfiltered.
but be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Thank you.